All right, so uh, am I on? <laughs> All right. Alrighty, folks. Hello there. I'm Mr. Gamepie, and this is Sonic and Knuckles. A nice little test. Now, this is actually Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I've already completed the first half of the game, which is Sonic 3. Thus, what you're seeing right now is the beginning of Sonic and Knuckles. Because the thing about this game is that it's really two games in one. Now, you basically missed the first half, but... <laughs> I'm going to be showing off the Sonic and Knuckles portion, as Tails, nonetheless, a character not playable in Sonic and Knuckles regularly. So, here we have what is called a Chaos Emerald minigame. Basically, I just jump up here, and boom, I'm in a minigame. Now, in Sonic and Knuckles alone, basically what will be going on is that um, we would have... Chaos Emerald minigames, you will have to do them in a certain order whenever you find big rings throughout the levels. However, because this is Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I can choose these Sonic and Knuckles minigames in any order I want, as long as I find a big ring at least. <laughs> the goal here is to collect all the blue spheres without collecting a single red sphere. So I hope you folks are ready for that. Also, whenever you make a circle with blue spheres like so, you'll collect rings. Rings aren't necessary, they're just fun. Alright, now something that should be noted is that you can only get Chaos Emerald minigames in, in the Sonic and Knuckles portion of the game for uh, the Chaos Emeralds that you got in the Sonic 3 portion of the game. So, like, if you got the green Chaos Emerald in Sonic 3, you would be able to get the green Super Emerald in the Sonic and Knuckles portion. But, um, let's say you missed the red Chaos Emerald in Sonic 3, well, you know what? Guess what? No red Super Emerald for you. <laughs> That's just how it works. Anyway, so what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be getting a perfect. Basically, that means that I completed the entire Chaos Emerald minigame, getting every single ring that could possibly be obtained. Sometimes this is hard, sometimes it isn't. This time, it wasn't too bad. And BAM! The first Super Emerald. A Super Emerald is basically just a souped-up version of Chaos Emerald. Pretty standard stuff. I'm not really sure how long I'll be playing. But I'll at least get through a few zones. Alrighty then, so, this is the first level of the game, Mushroom Hill Zone. You might recognize it from Sonic Generations, the 3DS version. Or you might not, because I'm going to be going through pathways that Tails would normally be taking, rather than Sonic and Knuckles. And really, the Sonic Generations version of this level doesn't look very familiar to me. Like, um, a lot of the levels in that game, you know, they, they share a lot of resemblance to their original format. But Mushroom Hill Zone, not not so much. It it probably represents the least of what it originally looked like. At least that's how I feel anyway. Alrighty then. All right, so folks, is everything sufficiently awesome with you? I certainly hope it is. I bet you folks are rocking on stuff. I should probably have a window open to see the chat box and stuff. I'll probably open it up here in a minute. Now, of course, this is this is actually my first time streaming anything. So, I, I have no idea what I'm doing in that regard. However, this is like the bajillionth time I've played this game, so at least I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Alrighty then. 
Also, it helps that I usually do live commentary anyway. So as you can see, we have these little guys that throw mushrooms around at you. The mushrooms don't actually hurt you, but they do bounce you around, and that can toss you into harmful objects. It's not very good running into harmful objects, as you might be able to guess. I guess I should mention some differences about the characters. Also, this is a mini-boss. He's incredibly easy if you have the fire shield, because that fire out of his jetpack doesn't hurt you. Anyway, yes, yeah, something about the characters. Right now I'm playing as Tails. He can fly. He doesn't run quite as fast as Sonic, nor does he jump quite as high. But those aren't very noticeable at all. He also doesn't get a super form after you get all the Chaos Emeralds. Getting all the super emeralds, on the other hand, well, that's a different story. Now here we have Knuckles, an antagonist for Sonic and Tails, but he does have his own gameplay, which takes place after Sonic and Tails' adventure. He doesn't jump as high, and, um, yeah, that, that's basically it for his mo- oh, also he doesn't run as fast. But what he can do is glide and climb up walls. He can also break through certain walls that Sonic and Tails can't. This allows him to access various areas in the game that uh, your other two characters well, that they're not capable of getting there. <laughs> and then as for Sonic, he's the most default character, I'd say. He, uh, he can run the fastest, jump the highest. He has this thing called an air shield, well, at least I call it an air shield, where he does a double jump, and then, um, basically what happens is he'll become invincible for a split second. He can also use the various elemental shields with special double jumps. Oh. I can increase the size of the game stream. Oh, there we go. Like so, I'm guessing. Right? I did that right, right? Did I do that right with the game screen and stuff? I can't tell. I mean, I can't see it from out of this direction. Alright, cool. Got it. We're rocking. Alright, now, there are several Chaos Emeralds in this level, but this is the only one that I can really consistently find. I mean, sometimes I'll find one or two others, but the thing about Sonic and Knuckles is that for some reason I just can't memorize most of the levels. Like, there are a lot of levels that like, I know inside and out, I can tell you where the hamster were going all the time, but with some of these levels I just can't. I just can't remember where everything is. Now, Sonic 3, that, that's no problem for me. I, I know where I'm going, like, all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll do that real quick. I'm being suggested to look at the chat, and so I'll be opening up that just real fast. Yeah. One moment. Alrighty then. Okay, back to what I was doing. I'm guessing that the chat... I, I can't see what's previously said. Heh, <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows who I am. They're like, Mr. Game and Pie, who's that weirdo? I'm not going to watch him. <laughs> Anyway, so as we can see, I've gotten another perfect on this Chaos Emerald minigame, because that's what I am at this game. Not really. <laughs> but I'm pretty close. Well, thank you. I try to be entertaining. <laughs> And boom, we got another Super Emerald. Alright, so, you know, we haven't seen a whole lot of Robotnik in this game. 
I think it's about time that we beat his brains out. What do y'all say? I mean, he's got a lot of brains in there. He's pretty smart. Well, theoretically, anyway. Alrighty. And, yeah, that guy. Dragonfly guy. Annoying. Here we go. This boss is incredibly easy, because you get a bunch of free hits at the very beginning. Alright, now, so you see, we're going to be going through this obstacle course of spike balls that are, well, put on various gates. You want to hit, you want to beat this guy really fast, because the spike balls get really tr tricky to jump through. Fortunately, he doesn't take too many hits, because of all those free hits that you get at the very beginning. Also, um, I like to stay on the edge of these little capsules, because the, the cutscenes become funnier. Alright. <laughs> the eggplant. Alright, so here we have this big sky ship, and Tails is completely freaking out about it. Except, not anymore. Instead of flying onto the ship, he just sort of grabs onto it. Because that's totally Tails right there. Alright, now here comes one of my favorite soundtracks in the game. It is Flying Battery Zone. We actually see Flying Battery Zone in Sonic 3 at the very first level. So this has been heavily foreshadowed, like, since the very beginning. Alrighty. So, there are a variety of shields that you'll want in this level, primarily the fire shield, because there are a variety of fire traps, as, you, as you've been, well, seeing, probably. This part of the level is incredibly easy with Tails due to his ability to fly. No problem. That part did get me stuck a lot whenever I was a kid, though. These can act as springs, they can also act as switches later on. Tails makes these sections incredibly quick, because if I was playing as Sonic or Knuckles, I'd have to be jumping all over those things, going all over the place, but nope, not as Tails. Though, considering that Tails wasn't a playable character originally in Sonic and Knuckles, this is justified, since they weren't exactly expecting him to be here, <laughs> in a sense. And an extra life for me. It is beautiful. Alright, so you see, we have these little mouse things. I've always been wondering about them, like, are these supposed to be like computer mice or something? <laughs> yes, Tails is easy mode. Now, there's something interesting over here. Passing these magnetic spike balls, we have an invincibility box. But watch, watch, watch. Watch how far I can go with the in invincibility box. Alright, so I run past these guys, which wouldn't be too hard. Then we have this platforming section here. Oh yes, Tails was great in Sonic Adventure. Alright, so... Oh, yeah, this is really cool. These egg capsules. Uh, they're used for a variety of things in this level. Not only releasing the animals at the end of the stage, but also as springs, getting rings, all sorts of stuff. They're very creative with them. In fact, they're even in the background in certain areas. Alright, now these particular things here can be used as platforms. Also, you can push this spike. Ah, yes, Gamma was pretty cool. And boom. Alright, so if you want to get it perfect, you need to grab the rings over here. That's the thing about the Chaos Emerald minigames in Sonic & Knuckles, is that often you'll find rings just sort of laying around out in the middle of nowhere. You would never find those, that kind of stuff, in um, the Sonic 3 minigames, except for the last one. Alright. Now this, this minigame, it's kind of interesting, because um, it, it's sort of like, there's this center section, and then there's this big path around it. Also, don't hit any of the yellow spheres. You see, what they do is they kind of act as a spring, launching you across the stage. In many stages, this is very beneficial, as it allows you to skip around parts very easily. 
in this stage, not so much. They sort of bounce you all over the place and are very liable to bounce you it just into a red sphere, which makes you lose the minigame. Alright. So let's hear. Almost there. Alright, here we go. Whoa! Oh dear! Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was close. <laughs> anyway, these will be the last of the rings. Boom, 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 and... There we go, success. Ah, uh, yes, Sonic Adventure 2 was a fun game. But Sonic 3 and Knuckles is my favorite. And that's why I'm playing it right now. <laughs> now, as you can see, getting perfect gives you a lot of points. They also give you continues, which are basically an extra three lives if you ever get a game over. I don't really use continues very often anymore, but <laughs> it's nice to have them. Ah, uh, you should very much consider getting the 2D Sonic games. They're some of the best that I've ever played. As you can see, hitting this capsule here gives me rings. Then hitting a few of these other ones will give you other things. I believe there are some animals. Yeah, there's some animals. The animals don't do anything, they're just cute. Alright. Now, here we're going to find a very common theme within Sonic and Knuckles. Alright, so, this is the mini-boss. We can't really hit him. See, he's completely invincible to our attacks. But, he can defeat himself. This is something that you're going to be finding a lot in this game. Puzzle bosses, people. Puzzle bosses. Are we playing Sonic the Hedgehog or Legend of Zelda? I don't know anymore. Anyway, yeah. After making him hit himself over and over again... <laughs> So here we have Act 2. Something that differentiates this game from the other games in the classic series is the fact that both Act 1 and Act 2 have slightly different themes. And, um, well, in the other games, both themes work entirely the same. I guess I should describe the elemental shields real quick. This is the electric shield. The only elemental shield to continue appearing in the Sonic games. It makes rings come to you and makes you immune to electrical attacks. I was also having the fire shield for a long time, which just makes you, um, immune to fire. Ah, yes. The Wii U. I'm quite excited about that. It's gonna be a good time for everyone. Except for the people who don't like the Wii U. Then it won't be a good time for them. And why take the elevator where you can fly? Yes, I certainly try to do that. <laughs> that. That is part of my style. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Flying! It helps. Normally I'd be able to just jump up these little platforms that would come out of the walls, but who needs that when you're playing as Tails? Oh, I do have to be careful with these fire bars now, since I don't have my fire shield anymore. I like to press down whenever going over areas like this, because doing a spin dash mode makes you go a lot faster than simply running. Also, invincibility! Very useful for not getting hit. Oh. Now, there are some projectiles that all shields can actually deflect. Usually, if the projectile looks kind of spherical, that most, most shields will deflect that. There's also one shield I haven't showed off, which is completely useless in Sonic and Knuckles. It's called the Bubble Shield. Um, the Bubble Shield, it makes it so that you will not drown underwater at all. Ever. Uh, unfortunately, Sonic, uh, Sonic 3, or, well, no, Sonic and Knuckles doesn't have any water. Now, Sonic 3, on the other hand, that practically every level in that game has water in it. So, whenever you're in that part of the game, that's it's great to have a bubble shield. Just not in this part of the game. 
All right, so as you can see in the background, we have egg capsules. I've always thought that, that was a really cool effect right there, making, letting you see uh, where they store all this stuff. Also, I guess I should mention, whenever you have a certain number of rings, you can go into bonus stages. There are three bonus stages in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, one from Sonic 3 and, one f and two from Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, in this one, you, it's sort of like a gumball machine. You can get one-ups, shields, rings, all kinds of stuff. There's also a special ball that uh, is green and says rep. That lets the springs come down at the bottom again. And I got the bubble shield. <laughs> I got the useless one, everybody. Well, at least I get to see what it looks like. Now, Sonic can do special jumps with all of these shields. The electric shield allows him to do a double jump. The bubble shield allows him to launch himself downward, which he'll then bounce back upward at a higher height. And then the fire shield allows him to launch himself forward. Kind of like the homing attack, except it doesn't actually home in on anything. <laughs> Alright, so this is a homage from Sonic 2. With this uh, giant laser beam here. However, you don't actually have to fight it like you did back in Sonic 2. You just have to avoid it. No problem at all. Also, Robotnik's face, whenever the laser hits, is quite hilarious. Let's watch. Oh, wait, no, he didn't make the face. All right, that's... That's the other character. Never mind. That's right, laser. That's right. You just do stuff. Oh, there's... There's his face. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is another thing that uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles in its entirety absolutely loves. Well, yes, he does get guns, quite frequently. He just puts them on robots rather than using them himself. Anyway, the this game loves the keep moving sections, whether it's floors coming up to crush you, walls coming inside to crush you, if it involves you running away from something that's trying to kill you, it loves it in this game. But anyway, now I'm just waiting because this floor down here actually needs to uh, take me up to the boss. Though I never really understood what the heck is going on here. With the floor coming up and stuff. Alright, now this, this is a very easy boss that is really just no problem at all. So you see, he's got these spiked arms on the ground here. If you touch them, you get hurt. And um, you see, whenever you jump in between them, he'll shoot fire up. And, um, yeah, that, that's about it. This, this thing where he's going up and down, that doesn't even do anything. That just lets you hit him. <laughs> no problem at all. So, yeah, that's probably one of the easiest bosses in the game. Also, if you look closely, I'm hovering slightly above the ground. Alright, now, uh, I said earlier that sometimes there are just levels in this game that I can't, like, play through. Like, or I just can't remember them. In many... This isn't very common in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I've played it hundreds of times, probably, and I know it very well. But Sando Paula's Zone, Act 1, is one of the few levels where I just can't figure it out what the heck is going on with this level. I just can't ever remember it. <laughs> and I don't know why. And it annoys me to no end. And yes, I am Tails. Because, you know, playing as Sonic, that's fun and all, but, um... Yeah, uh, I'll... Ba basically, I'm doing a Let's Play series right now of these games, and, um... Finding Tails going through these Sonic and Knuckles levels is one of the only things that you won't find me doing in the series. Because I go through the Sonic 3 levels as Tails, I'm going to be going through the Sonic and Knuckles levels as Sonic, and, um, well, I'm going to be going through the Sonic 3 and Knuckles levels as Knuckles, because he takes very different pathways, and it's basically an entirely different game with him. And so you guys are seeing exclusive footage. <laughs> anyway. And those guys are annoying. These little scorpion guys, they have those little stinger tails. 
and uh, basically they launch them at your direct position. Never miss. Pretty much. Very hard to avoid. Yes, hooray for Sonic Team. Very much so. Now there's like three or four Chaos Emeralds in this level, but don't don't expect me to find any of them. Because I just, I, I can't remember how to get to any of them. Let's try flying around some. Oh hey, there's rings up here. I don't know how they expect you to get them without tails, but whatever. <laughs> they are up there. Now, here we also have another big theme of this level. Well, I guess it's the first big thing. I haven't really mentioned one yet. It is waiting. Basically, um, there's a lot of times where you're just going to have to wait for things to happen, like pushing this block. We have to wait for that to happen. Going down the uh, stuff. Well, steampunk, lo steampunk level. Yeah. Really, in a sense, most Sonic games have some kind of steampunk level, at least to some extent, considering that Robotnik's bases are always like gears and stuff. So I guess that isn't technically steampunk, that's just robotic stuff, but whatever. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Oh, hey, this is a Tails path. That's right. In Sonic and Knuckles, despite the fact that Tails isn't playable, they have they have pathways specifically for Tails. Ow, that, that was a spike. Wow, no, no, you stop that robot. Alright, I think I'm just going to go this pathway now, because that's getting annoying. And that leads me to this wall that only Knuckles can break. Okay, we're going to have to go down some. Eh, Sonic CD is fun, but I prefer this game. Alright, let's see here. What do we have? Because seriously, I don't, I don't even know where I am anymore. <laughs> now these, these robots, they look like sand dunes that uh, walk at you. They can't actually hurt you, but they can push you into stuff, which, you know, can be a problem occasionally. And you can't really jump on them either. You have to spin dash through them. Sonic Adventure games are fun, yeah. I've had good times with those. And yes, once again, waiting. Lots of waiting. Like going down this wall. Okay, so, here we go, folks. It's mini-boss time! We have this big pyramid coming out of the sand! Oh yeah, I saw so many series on Let's Break Sonic Adventure going as far as they can through the game without getting the light speed shoes. That was pretty cool. Okay, so here we have this rock golem, perhaps one of the only bosses in the game that wasn't made by Robotnik. Perhaps, I don't know, maybe he was. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we can't actually hurt him. Doesn't matter where we hit him or how we hit him, he's never gonna die. However, there's this convenient pit of quicksand over here. So we just sort of wait. Once again, bring back the theme of the level again. <laughs> and come on, rock golem. Just jump right into the sand. What? Sonic 4? <laughs> yes, Golem exploding. They do that. Alrighty. So, here we have Sandopolis Act 2. Now, in this level, I, ac I can actually remember where I'm going. Because, <laughs> um, unlike Santa Paulus Act 1, there's really only one pathway to take in this level. So that makes it a lot easier. Now, you'll notice that at the beginning, the lights were off. And if I don't hit one of those switches for long enough, the lights will actually uh, turn back off. That's because of the ghosts I just released. You see, basically, once the lights turn off low enough, the ghosts will start attacking you. It takes a long time for this to happen. You have plenty of time to uh, make that, well, not happen. But still, it should be noted. Also, 
It's time for a Chaos Emerald! Boom! Let's do this one. Alright, now this... This Chaos Emerald, it's really hard for me to get a perfect on it. I think I've done it, like, twice. Because, um... You see, another theme with the Chaos Emeralds in this game is that you're pretty much shoveled along a certain pathway, and deviations from this pathway are kind of deadly. <laughs> because of that, jumping into the middle to get the rings, it can be quite difficult, especially as you get faster. Here we go. Here we go. If I get these rings... No, wait, there's still some more rings, darn it. I still have to do that one more time. <laughs> what? What the heck? Why did it turn? Darn it. Well, there we go. Well, thank you. I try. At least I think that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so normally, with any other character, you would have to bounce around all over the place, write a little thing, and get over here before this thing closes. Well, I don't have to, because I'm Tails, and Tails is awesome. You'd also have to climb down a wall to get that over here, but I don't have to, because Tails can fly. Tails just makes everything easier. Whoa! And, uh, yeah, you want to watch out for this, because it can crush you. And, oh dear, that's about to close on me, then that would be bad. Alright, now that, this enemy, this enemy back here, um, like, years ago, I did a Sonic 3 and Knuckles playthrough. That guy completely messed me up. I think he killed me, like, two or three times. It was, it was insane. So that playthrough in general was pretty bad, but, yeah. Alright, so as you can see, the ghosts are getting larger. Well, not anymore. And here we have another moment of a keep moving section. I hit that sand thing there, and the sand starts rising. So I have to just keep moving. Normally, as Sonic, I would have to ride the sand up, and let it carry me to the next platform, and then outrun it before it crushed me. As Knuckles or Tails, you don't have to do that, because Knuckles can climb walls, and Tails can just fly. So in general, Sonic has the hardest time with this part of the game. Also, we have Speed Shoes. First time we've seen them, and uh, they speed you up. Though it doesn't really help a whole lot with Tails' play, unfortunately. Also, it should be noted that Tails does get tired after a while, as most of you probably know. Also, I'm going to go for a suicidal one-up. Bam. Alright, here we go. Gotta outrun the sand now. Ah, you never got past this zone? Well, that's, that's kind of sad, because the next zone is pretty cool. Lava Reef Zone, and the ending is really awesome. Come on, thing, go back up. There we go. Another scorpion. A good way of attacking the scorpions effectively is to attack them from behind. They'll never see it coming, and they won't be able to shoot your sti their stinger at you if you do that. Oh, and I got hit. Here we go. And I, somebody is messaging me. One second. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I do check, check the chat whenever I can. Uh, uh, the PC. Oh, um... I don't know. Maybe. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, it is on the PC, actually. But, um, really, it's a lot easier to get this on the system. Like, it's available on pretty much all the systems at this point. We Shop Channel, Xbox Live. Um, there are various remakes, like the GameCube remix, uh, remake, Sonic, uh, Sonic Mega Collection, which I'm playing right now. 
And Sonic Mega Collection also appeared on some PlayStation system. I think it was PlayStation 2. So, you know, it's a widely available game. It's also on the Sega Genesis, the original version. Which I also have, but I'm not playing right now. Because I can't record that. <laughs> okay, on Nintendo DS, I guess. Here we go. And I got another Chaos Emerald over here. Well, at least I accessed another Chaos Emerald. Alright, time to do this minigame again, but with less fail. And this time I'm not even going to bother with the rings, let's just get through this thing. Also, I believe that some of the games are available on iPhone. Though I wouldn't know personally, I don't have an iPhone. <laughs> Alright, so, what I consider pretty much the hardest Chaos Emerald mini game of this uh, game here is almost done. I just don't have to, I just have to make sure that I don't screw up this last turn. And boom! Now, as you can see, I didn't get any points for this because I didn't collect any rings. That's kind of annoying, but at least I got the Chaos Emerald. Okay, time for the boss of this area. Whenever you get all the Super Emeralds, well, as Sonic and Knuckles, you get their Hyper Forms. As Tails, you get a Super Form, because he doesn't get a Super Form from the Chaos Emeralds. This boss is basically a wall. He fires his laser at you, he walks forward, he has spikes on his stomach and hands, and that's about it. However, whenever you reach the other side of the arena, there's a wall over there. And if he crushes you, well, that's, that's kind of death. Now something that should be noted about this game is that you can play as Super and Hyper Forms even during regular gameplay. Uh, this was changed in later games, such as the Sonic Adventure series, where the Super Form became a final boss only sort of thing. In fact, that, that itself was introduced in this game as well. <laughs> With, um, if you're playing as Sonic and you have all the Chaos Emeralds or the Super Emeralds, you'll get to fight a special final boss at the end. Tails doesn't get to do this though. And neither does Knuckles. Alright, so here we have Lava Reef Zone, a really cool area. And the second act of this area has a lot of Chaos Emeralds to uh, collect. Or at least a lot of big rings to try to get Chaos Emeralds. We also have Fireballs. They're quite fiery. Alright. So, let's see here. We got lava, we got fire stuff, you know, standard stuff. In general, this is the first time that uh, the fire shield becomes useful. Well, since the very first level of Sonic 3, anyway. Because there are a lot of fire traps here. In fact, you can even stand in lava whenever you have a fire shield. There are also lava falls, as you can see right here. You can stand under these with the fire shield. I don't have the fire shield quite yet. I'm about to get it here in a second. And boom. And I spin dash the wrong way. Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, kinda. But this is the time that it really becomes useful again. Like, practically all of the traps can be avoided with a fire shield. Now, the reason why the first level was really good was because um, there were also a lot of fire traps there. See? Standing under a lava fall. Also, I can fly up a lava fall. But anyway, back down. But yeah, the first level of Sonic 3 was this forest that was on fire. So that's why the fire shield was really useful there.
And I got like two one-ups in a row. Alright, here we go. Let's spin dash up this thing. Because that's how you do it. Fireball. And here's a Chaos Emerald in this level. Alright, let's try another one. Now, for some reason, this level always makes me think of the Chronicles of Narnia. I have no idea why. It just, it just does. Alrighty then. But Sonic 2 is in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Now, of course, as you go through the level, you do get faster. I'm pretty sure most people have noticed this by this point. <laughs> but something that I heard is that you actually get faster every time you turn. I do not believe this is true. I'm pretty sure that I've just spontaneously sped up whenever I was just running forward. So if somebody tells you that, ignore them. They don't know what they're talking about. Here we go. And another perfect free! Well, my real stream is going to be next Monday. This is really just a practice stream to make sure that I know actually what I'm doing. Yes, actually that is true. But he wasn't credited in the game because, um, well, he didn't like the fact that the sound came out the way it did because of the limitations for a 16-bit system. However, you can hear the resemblance to many of his later songs. Alright, and right next to that Chaos Emerald Mini game, we have another one! Now, the order that I've been doing the Chaos Emeralds in is actually the order that you'll do them in naturally if you play Sonic and Knuckles. I just do it that way because, I don't know, that's just the way that I feel like they should be done. <laughs> yeah! That's, uh, that's what happens whenever you've played the game for years. And I mean years! I was like four whenever I started playing this game. At this point I'm like 18, so, you know, that's 14 years of playing this game. If I'm not good at it at this point, then something is seriously wrong. Of course, I was spinning around there so that I could actually read what you folks are saying. It's kind of hard to keep track of the chat and the game at the same time. So if I just start randomly spinning or something, that's that's what I'm doing. But I guess I could pause the game, but I don't know. No. <laughs> Alright, now, there are these uh, sections over here that turn to rings, of course. And if you want it perfect, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get that section before the last blue spheres that you don't get rings from. And so at this point, I'm basically just going to get these, then grab the blue spheres in the center. Alright, so these should be the last of the rings. They are... And a perfect is mine! I try. Shock. I try. How many Chaos Emeralds left? Well, there's only one Chaos Emerald left, and I am Mr. Game and Pie. You probably don't know me. But I like hamsters, and that's just about all you need to know. <laughs> uh, 
Alrighty, here we go. So, here we go. Um, I don't have a fire shield, unfortunately. I would like to get one soon, if I could, but I don't know. Well, thank you. Alright, now here's one of the things that I've never figured out about the game. You see, there's a Chaos Emerald in this room. You see, right down there in the bottom left corner. You can barely see it. Oh, cool. Yay for people knowing who I am. Indeed I am. In various other Kirby games, I'm probably going to start with a warm-up, like, I don't know, Kirby Streamland or something. Here we go. This is the only way that I know how to get this Chaos Emerald. And to note, it's the last one! Alright, this Chaos Emerald, it's pretty hard to actually get done, but if you're going for the perfect, it's basically the same thing as getting it done regularly. So there's that, at least. Alright, and the reason why it's so hard to get done is because, kind of like that other one that I messed up on earlier for getting the perfect, um, it, it basically leads you on a single path, and if you deviate from that path at any point, you're dead. It requires very precisely timed button clicks, a knowledge of what's going to happen before it happens, and it's generally pretty tough. It, it took me a long time. Also, this room kind of screwed me up, because there's an exit right up here that's kind of hard to find. I really like that there that they did, with uh, just running straight down the line and then get it, making all these rings. I don't know how the game logic makes that happen, but by golly, they made it happen. Oh no! Darn it! Um, I think everything is 16-bit in this game. Alright, well, it'll be okay. I might not have gotten that Chaos Emerald minigame, but there'll still be a lot in the next level. So yeah, look, I, I can't find any other way into this room. Like seriously, how are you supposed to get in here unless you're Tails? I don't know. Maybe you're not supposed to get in there unless you're Tails. Maybe it's just as simple as that. And another one up for me. That's the thing about this game. When you have 100 rings or 200 rings, you will get an extra life. And another extra life, yeah. 23 lives. They say that these days games are tossing lives at you like candy. Well, they are, but this game was pretty easy with that as well. <laughs> Um, okay. That that sounds cool. I, I could totally practice some co-commentary. I've done a little of, bit of it before. With, um... My, my good friend Game and Roy. We had a good time with... I had a good time co-commentating a few of his vids. And I've actually uh, been a part of this group called the Game and Watchers. We're Mr. Game and Pie, Game and Roy, and George Game Watch. And, um... We've, we've done, like, Mario Kart, but that's about it. Alright. Now these smoke guys, I guess I should mention what they do. They, um... They basically excrete this smoke. And if you touch the smoke, you will slow down incredibly. And you will start losing rings constantly. Probably. I think that Jessica watches them, unless you are Jessica and you're just going by a different name down there. <laughs> Now I'm getting sp Skype messages for people to add me, I'm sure, but, um, yeah. 
Alright, cool. So you are Jessica. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, Jessica who? Yeah, now that makes sense. <laughs> so anyway, here we have a giant hand. Probably not related to Master Hand. But yeah, I'll add people after I'm done with this boss. Hands! They're evil. Bam! And there we go! Okay, time to add things with people and stuff. Uh, contact Yeah. There we go. BAM! Alright. Oh yeah, I also have a Twitter. And a Tumblr. I'm Mr. Game and Pie everywhere. Because that username is, like, never taken. Alright. Spike balls! Have to avoid those. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's joining the call. It's kind of like Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Um, yeah, sure, you can follow me. I, I don't care. That's cool. I don't post on Twitter a whole lot. I'm much more active on Tumblr. Though if you don't like Homestuck, you might not want to follow me on Tumblr, because I've been posting a lot of Homestuck-related stuff there. Okay, sure. I mean, I don't, I don't really mind who joins. Have everybody join if... I don't know. <laughs> yes, very good. Tumblr is very fun, although it can get rather disturbing at times. It can be like, wow, people seriously posted that on Tumblr. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, hmm. Okay, so who wants to join the call anyway, exactly? Shock, I know that you want to join. Anyone else? Alright, one second, folks. I think I'm just going to start up this call already, and we'll start adding people whenever necessary. Alright, so I guess I'll just call Shock real quick then, first, and then we'll start adding other people, because I know that he wants to join, as soon as I can find him on this list. Darn it, where is he? <laughs> What the heck? Darn it, Shock, where are you on the list? <laughs> One second. CM Punk with the X's. Well, okay, looking at all the people online... Um, I don't see you. Colton, F oh, oh, that's you, okay. Here we go. Hello! I can. Can you folks hear him? Yes, I know. I was looking for shock, <laughs> not Colton. Ah, I see. Wait, you guys can't hear them? They're they're all saying nope. Ah, darn it! They they still can't hear you. Okay, I must have set something up wrong or something. Yeah, I'm using XSplit. All right, one second. 
Uh, I'm going to keep working here because I still have to beat this mini game. Right, I'll probably add everybody a little bit later. I might just have to redo some of the settings. Don't worry, I'll add you in a second. In fact, you know what? Here we go. Here we go. Do 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 do. Add people. And there's there is you. Yes, there's you. You have been added to a call. And um, let's see. Pete? Oh, I don't think I have Pete's thing right now. Pete, can you add Mr. Game and Pie? Because I don't think I have you on my Skype. And that's my Skype name, Mr. Game and Pie. Because I am always Mr. Game and Pie. Everywhere. Oh, I am? Oh. So I need to update Skype or something? Well, I'll do that later. <laughs> Yeah, I'll update the Skype later. Alright, alright, I'll let you be call host then. You just call me then. I guess. So that is weird, because I've had m multiple people in my call before. How I record with George and Roy. Hmm? Ah, nah. Here we go. Okay, so we're working now. Yeah, I hope it does. I, I really don't know what's wrong. <laughs> like... I am completely new to streaming. The only experience that I have is the fact that I do live commentary for my videos. Ah, I see. Well, they still can't hear anyone else, so that's kind of annoying. Okay. Alright, one second. I think I might have to stop the stream to edit this stuff. Alright, one second. I'll